I duetted someone's video on TikTok, which is a sentence I think I don't think I'd ever say, um, even about TikTok. Since April, I've been using TikTok um, mostly to just watch videos. I really don't upload a lot. But if you're interested, it's jazz underscore witherspoon on TikTok. Um, but I got into an argument with somebody. Uh, not really. I mean, I wasn't starting an argument, but um, a disagreement um, about a folk singer who's been dead for 45 years, uh, Phil Oaks. I said he's a left liberal. And this um, SJW couch potato uh, said that he is you know, was far to the left, like a communist or socialist. It's not true. Um, I made valid points, but um, I really get sick of using TikTok. And if you are using it to, like, reply to videos and your phone sucks, um, it is really frustrating to only have, like, a minute after you just took 10 minutes to edit down a video and make sure it's in the time allotted and you really can't, like, have a full coherent... Um, discussion about anything um, in that time frame and for me it was ridiculous because my phone doesn't the second that I record anything I have to delete it off my phone after I upload it because my phone's like running out of space um, but I had blocked that person because they immediately because they disagreed with me they immediately called me like a doofus um, and they even went so far as to create a spam account because I blocked them the first time to shoehorn in uh, their disagreement with me so uh, and then they made videos about me I didn't look at any of them that's the best thing about arguing online if someone starts uh, talking trash to you just block them you're never gonna get um, you're not gonna have a satisfying dialogue with someone like that so just block them it'll infuriate them and it did with this person to the point where they made like a second uh, channel on TikTok just to try to respond to me after I already blocked them so that was satisfying to me um, but I had made a video about Phil o or a couple videos about Phil Oaks, and I said he's a left liberal. Um, if he was alive today, he'd be in that category. Possibly, he'd possibly be a Democrat. I mean, who knows? It's been fucking 45 years since his death. Uh, but at the time, um, he had said, um, you know, he's against the Vietnam War. We need a revolution. This and that. And the other person um, and people I've talked uh, argued with online on TikTok have said he could have been an anarcho-communist or um, a socialist, but realistically, no. Um, he did have like a couple songs about revolution and he said fuck capitalism and this and that, but that's like shit liberals say all the time. That's shit people, uh, people on the right have said stuff like that all the time. Um, it's like a lazy phrase to use, we need a revolution. I've heard Democrats say it, I've heard people in the fucking Green Party say it. Uh, then you, on the other side, you hear like Alex Jones and paleo conservatives and libertarians all say revolution and revolution. It all means different things to uh, different people. Sometimes it can mean like a revolution in your mind. It can mean a violent revolution. It doesn't mean that you're a socialist. It doesn't mean that you're a communist. Um, I also mentioned that Phil Oaks wrote a song about JFK. If you look back on history, JFK was not that far to the left. If he was still alive at the time um, and made it and did not, didn't get assassinated, uh, we would have still gone to Vietnam, unquestionably. He was a vehem vehemently anti-communist politician. Um, a great book to read about that, if you're interested, is um, 1960 by David Petruza. Uh, but anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, so I saw talked to my wife about it, how fucking annoying it is to actually have an argument on TikTok um, and argue with people because it's fucking... TikTok, you can't, you don't have enough time to respond to anything. There's no actual debate or dialogue. You only have like a minute to upload anything. Um, so I was telling my wife about it, and she's like, "All right, this person sounds like a gatekeeping asshole." And I was like, "Oh, you're exactly right, a gatekeeping hipster. That's who I'm dealing with." Um, but there's this revisionist history that comes in, and everyone does it. But this person online was um, very ridiculous about it uh, where you think that someone in history that you admire mimics whatever your beliefs are um, so in the case of Phil Oaks someone who's an anarchist is like oh yeah Phil Oaks was an anarchist someone who's a communist is like oh yeah he was a communist he was a uh, revolutionary blah 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 and it's, it's not true um, I could do the same thing I'm a right libertarian 
Um, and I could say that a lot of the stuff Phil Oaks talked about is right in line with libertarianism. It's like anti-war, leave people alone, leave these other countries alone, don't be the world's police force. You can say all that is a libertarian, but he was a left liberal. Um, he supported Eugene McCarthy in the 1970 election, uh, wrote a song about JFK, um, but he was critical of power. He was critical of power. That doesn't mean he necessarily he was a radical. Um, that's just my thoughts. Um, you can't ask Phil Oaks what his actual politics are. You can listen to his songs and interpret that. And if you interpret that he's a socialist or communist, he literally said, I am not a Marxist. I wrote a song about JFK. My Marxist friends um, don't understand why I did that. And that's why I'm not a Marxist. That is what he said. So I, I look at actions that a person makes as opposed to just some lazy phrases over the years that someone says talking about revolution in a song or saying F capitalism, anything like that. I listened to a band called Anti-Flag growing up. I used to be very far to the left. That half the songs are like, we need a revolution, blah, blah, blah. And they didn't go out and say smash the state or anything, but every, every uh, song was like, we need a revolution, changes, radical changes, this and that. Then they were interviewed and like, who did you vote for in the 2004 election? And the majority said, I voted for Kerry. One of them said they voted for Nader. So are they socialists? Are, are they Marxists? I don't think so. Left liberals. They were left liberals. They talk about revolution, just like Phil Oaks. When push comes to shove, they're just going to be voting for liberal Democrats or whoever the left option is. They're not going to be voting socialists. They're not in socialist organizations. They are not radicals. They don't believe in the violent overthrow of the government, um, and they're not a part of that. So a big thing about radicals is if someone's on a radical left, they, they're not either they're not voting, or if they do vote, it's just like an afterthought. They're not supporting people and saying, here's who I voted for, you should vote for them too. It's like the same thing that uh, conservatives do, where they... they look at like a historical figure and like, oh, that guy lines up with my politics, like libertarians or people on the right who say that um, Ronald Reagan was some like libertarian hero. He was, look at his policies. He was not a libertarian. I don't know. I just got really frustrated with the gatekeeping. Um, I don't plan on arguing on TikTok anymore. It's, it's really taking a toll on my phone, like the space and stuff. The best part is just blocking somebody and knowing that um, I made this person so frustrated because they have to be right. They have to be right. So, um, yeah, this is probably pointless for 90% of the people watching this. Um, if you're a Phil Oaks fan, um, that's nice. But uh, I'm sure you'll disagree because most, most of the fans seem to think that Phil Oaks's politics matches theirs 45 years later. The, the, the political landscape has not changed at all in 45 years. So he would be an anarcho-communist. That's, ri that's ridiculous. I wanted to, to find out because he gave an answer which didn't make, uh, which only answered one part of the question. You asked, would you uh, encourage the soldiers to take up arms against the exactly. country itself, against the government? Exactly. 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 The question the violent was, overthrow yeah, the government. Yeah, would yeah. you encourage the students, uh, the young people in the country today not to join the army and yes. A, would you encourage the army, uh, the men in the army to desert? Yes, I would, I would uh, think that it, 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 it's gotten that poisonous, that it's one of those rare times where desertion is not dishonorable. Yes. Do you have... And, and, and I mean, if, if there was implication in your question about, about attacking the government, the soldiers attacking the government, no, I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think there's still room for, for, uh, for, cert, for certain amounts of civil disobedience and well, massing of numbers where it's not necessary. Well, yeah. what, what else could it be called? <laughs> You have to be attacking the government when you defy laws, don't you? Intellectually, yes, and, and yes. Well, intellectually in any other way. Yeah, but, right. Well, there's a difference between that and, and, and going to Washington with bayonets.